Now then, folks, now then, welcome to another edition of Ponty Porn Investigates. <laughs> now, in tonight's episode, episode 9, what we're going to do, we're going to have a look at a thing called Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda? What the bleeding ex and Al-Qaeda? Well, for you Ponty Porn Investigate fan base, you already know all about Al-Qaeda. Yeah, episode 5, you know, when we sent T-Boys in to kick fuck out at Russians. Uh, if you missed this episode, I mean, but I'll, I'll give you a quick recap. It's basically where we recruited thousands and thousands and thousands of people from our Muslim zones that we control. We trained them up and we sent them over to Afghan to fight against the Russians. And, and this is basically where the term Al-Qaeda comes from. It's basically the name of a database of all the names of, of the soldiers who, who we recruited. But anyway, that were episode 5 in this episode. What we're going to do, we're going to examine this Al-Qaeda and we're going to find out exactly how it all works. Alright, so how does it all work? Well, I'm glad you asked. Well, all these uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of recruits, uh, they all believe in a thing called Islam. Which basically means uh, they believe in this imaginary made up thing called Allah. It's a bit like believing in Santa, except, you know, this Allah bloke, he's got a better tan. Oh, oh, he don't have reindeers either, he's far too perfect for that shit. But basically, yeah, it's, it's the same as believing in Santa. Uh, but these uh, Muslim recruits, you know, they're, they're proper mind warped into it. You know, whatever fucking Santa Allah says, you know, they've got to do. So this Allah Claus bloke, uh, he, he basically has a network of real people uh, called preachers. Uh, and basically they spread the word and spread the teaching of Allah Claus. So what MI6 and CIA do, uh, they build a network of, you know, secret agents. They send them over to uh, Sun Tan Shop, make them tanned, and they make them grow a beard, put some muck under the fingernails, and all of a sudden we've got his own preachers. Now all the thousands and thousands of recruits, you know, T-boys, uh, they, they, they think they're working for Allah Claus, but no... Uh, really, they're working for, you know, MI6 and CIA. It's all about mind control. Allah Claus says you should do this, so that's basically what you should do. Now, folks, now, folks, what you should do is misunderestimate the absolute fucking stupidity of these recruits. I mean, these recruits, their blind loyalty to Allah Claus, you know, it's absolutely unbelievable the things they do. It absolutely beggars belief. Absolutely stupid bastards, I'm telling you. I mean, check this one out. Right, here's a question. How would you like to shag 72 virgins? Oh, yeah. Wow. 72 virgins? Now, that... That, folks, is like a dream come true. I mean, in my proud and extensive and very well accredited sexual career, uh, I've only managed to have uh, two virgins. Well, technically it were three, but one I had to, you know, pull out early, so it don't really count. I think it were hurt me a bit too much, but still, two virgins, you know. Wow, and you're on about 72. I would absolutely fucking love 72 virgins. Not talking about fatties either. I'm talking about proper 72 little cuties. Fucking yeah. Oh, eh? What's the catch? Well, it's quite a simple deal, really. Uh, if you want to go out and shag these 72 cute, fit as fuck virgins, all you got to do, according to Alaclaws, all you got to do is sellotape this bit of Semtex to your Sen, and blow yourself up into a million pieces. Whoa, hang on a minute. Now, for any bit of normal folk, you know, they'd see this as a bit of a bad deal, you know. But, oh, no, not these fucking recruits. Fucking hell, is that it? So I tape a bit of Sentex to myself and I get to shag 72 virgins. Fucking hell, sign me up. So what we've got is an army full of stupid fuckers. Uh, and they're all, you know, controlled and influenced by these key decision makers. They're in charge of the stupid fuckers. Uh, next, all we need is, you know, a face for the organisation. You know, someone who's going to deal with all the PR and stuff. The face. Who's going to be the face? Now, this place here, uh, this is called Saudi Arabia. Uh, and it's not like the West, you know, where you have a wife and then, you know, a mistress on the side. These fuckers, you know, they have a wife and then they have another wife. And then another wife. All at the same time, mind. And another wife and another wife. And then they have like 40 million fucking kids. And, you know, they have that many. Uh, no one's going to notice if we bother one. 
So that's what we do. Uh, he's called Bin Laden. Uh, it's a bit of a jip on mind, you know, you know the sort, shops at Oxfam. But other than that, you know, he, he's up for it. So it's like, Bin Laden's like, you know, well, what have I got to do, like? And um, MI6, CIA, they're like, well, well, you don't have to do fuck all. I mean, uh, all you got to do is sit in this cave, smoke a bit of weed, uh, and every time some big terror event happens, we'll do all the planning, we do it all, and then all you've got to do is say, you did it. Bin Laden's like, well, fuck it, why not? Alright, so now we've got an army full of stupid fuckers, all taking their orders from our guys on the ground, manipulating things to, you know, to tell them exactly what to do. Uh, and now, now we've got the face of the organisation, you know, to look after the PR. You know, everything's fucking ready now. Alright, so what's the plan? Well, the plan is, we're going to use this uh, army full of fucking stupid fuckers, uh, and they're going to launch loads of terror attacks. Uh, and basically, all the members of the population who the attacks are happening against, they're going to absolutely fucking shit themselves, run to the government for help, and the government say, oh, the only way we can help you is by taking all your civil liberties away from you. Uh, and because they're shitting themselves, you know, they're going to let it happen. And all this, uh, all this big grand scheme is all done in the name of some fucking invented, imaginary fucking being called Alaclaws. It's fucking foolproof! So December 1992 comes around, Al-Qaeda's debut first show. Uh, oh, they're going to do a bomb in a country called... Yeah, man. Uh, so yeah, the, the, you know what these Arabs are like, though. They're not the best at timekeeping, you know. They blow the fucking hotel up, but, you know, they're a bit too late. Not to worry, though, because... Uh, the next show on the Grand World Tour uh, is it, basically going to happen in uh, New York. Oh, yeah. They're going to go and blow the Twin Towers up. February 1993. Yeah, they, uh, they load a truck up with uh, loads of explosives, drive it into car park, and boom, boom, kaboom. Oh, I cut. Oh, I the made a right mess at paintwork. So as predicted, the population absolutely fucking shit themselves, you know, start wanting help from the government. Uh, told Bin Laden, as agreed, claims responsibility for it, uh, then goes back to smoking his bong. Anyway, back on with World Tour, uh, 1995, quick pit stop in Saudi Arabia, uh, same deal again with truck again. Uh, 1998, visit a couple of embassies over in Africa, same deal, kaboom. Uh, then in year 2000, uh, oh, back to the country of, yeah man, uh, yeah we go and blow coal up don't we? No, 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 not that coal, no we're not that lucky, um, it's some boat called coal parked up in water in the country of, yeah man. Yes, yeah, so all these attacks are happening on Grand Al-Qaeda World Tour, and yet, yeah, you know, Populations, they, they do, they, they, they shit themselves, but, you know, it's, it's, it's all forgot about in a day or two. Yeah, it makes the news and that, but a day or two later, you know, population goes back to living their lives, you know. It's, it's, so when I chat to other eyes, I you know, you know, what are we going to do about this? Like, what we need is one big, giant, massive as fuck attack to get these population absolutely running out of shit. Proper shit in themselves. We need the grand finale of all attacks. Yeah, something pivotal. What will be life changing? One big, massive fucking attack. <laughs> oh, I cut away. Nine eleven, isn't it? I know, cause uh, YouTube time clock says so. Symbolism's important, you see. It's a bit like this number seven falling over all by itself. Ah, you know, these things happen. But yeah, going back to these towers, you know, we've proper done the job proper this time. You know, we knocked them down. You know, the population absolutely fucking furious about this. Uh, you know, with a bit of salt in room, what we do, we beam across TV. Uh, a load of Muslims cheering at the towers falling down. 
Don't worry though, population. We're going to fight this terrorism. Uh, you know, we're going to have to monitor everything to do it though. And I mean, absolutely fucking everything. You want to send an email to an old friend? We're going to have to intercept it, read it, because it could be terrorism. Want to send a dirty text to your wife? We're going to have to intercept it, read it, in the name of fighting terrorism. In fact, we're going to have to fucking monitor everything, film everything, and store it all, all in the name of fighting international terrorism. But anyway, uh, this uh, Al-Qaeda Grand World Tour, you know, it, it is still in full swing. Uh, 2002 were a busy year with live events all across the globe. So was 03, complete sellouts there were. Uh, and in 04, even Cocker Spaniards, they had a bash, didn't they? You know, dismantling an old train set. And then... You know, 2005, us British, you know, uh, we're watching on about, you know, how America's knocked down their towers and uh, they've turned it into this big surveillance state. And, you know, us British were thinking, oh, hang on, maybe we should get a sense one of these attacks. So America catches wind of this and uh, starts getting right giddy. And you're thinking they're going to blow towers in Britain up. Whoa, 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 hold your fucking horses a minute, boy. -o. You're not blowing our towers up. Our towers are the towers of London. They used to be full of gold till Brownie Bowl sold it all off on cheap. He took it to cash converters, didn't he? Like a silicon. Nowadays, they're just full of knockoff gold off Alibaba.com. But still, you're not blowing our towers up. Our towers are the towers of London. They've been there for fucking years. They're not like your big lumps of concrete what needed knocking down anyway. Our towers are the towers of London and you're not fucking blowing them up. All right, so what else have we got? What else have we got? This is London. It's a beautiful historical city. Uh, back in olden days, we used to have clouds. Nowadays, we just have these long stripy things, but, but that's a different story. But anyway, yeah, it's a beautiful historical city, beautiful buildings, and you're not fucking blowing them up. So just to be absolutely crystal clear here, if anything's going on in our town, it's going on down underground. Yes, yeah, so July comes around and, oh, yeah, we blow all the subway trains up, don't we? You know, keep the building safe. Uh, well, we did a bus up top as well. We did, made a bit of a compromise. It wasn't a great loss. Bus had run out of MOT. But, yeah, we did it in Tavish Top Square. Now, for you Ponty Porn Investigate Elite fan base, you all know, I don't know about all Tavistock. You know the meaning of that one. But, yeah, boom, boom, kaboom. We've had his own attack and now all of a sudden... Terror, 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 terror. The Muslims are going to kill you. Terror, 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 terror. Beaming out everywhere, making sure the population's absolutely fucking shitting themselves. Oh, you silly bollocks over there. Why aren't your pants brown? Get over there with rest of shitty pants. Terror, terror, terror. You're going to be fucking scared. Don't worry, though, folks. We'll protect you. But to do it, we're going to bring... Loads of anti-terrorist laws in here, and we're going to monitor everything, and I mean absolutely everything. Oh, you over there, what are you doing buying some flour from the shop? For what? I don't care if it's for a fucking Sunday dinner or not. Them Yorkshire puddings could be terrorists. We're going to have to store it and log it. And you, what are you doing over there watching some porn? The what? I don't give a flying fuck if she can fit a cock and a dildo up her ass at the same time. That porn could be terrorist porn. We're going to have to monitor everything what you do. Including how long it takes you to spunk. We're fighting a war on international terrorism, don't you know? But anyway, every so often what we do to keep this terror, terror, terror alive, you know, what we do, uh, we release videos of Bin Laden. Oh, but, you know, Bin Laden's been dead for years. Fuck knows, you know, he, he must have been smoking that GMO shit. Not good for you, folks. <gasps> the what? He's dead? Who the fuck are we going to get in his films now if he's dead? Oh, so there's a there's a mad dash to uh, local lookalike agency. Yeah, we've come for Bin Laden. The what? What do you mean you're out of stock? The what? No, I don't want a Marilyn Monroe instead. I've come here for a Bin Laden. The what? What? Bloody hell am I going to do with a David Beckham? I don't fucking care if you can do the squeaky voice to match. I've come here for a Bin Laden. Hey yeah, so there's a bit of panic on now, isn't there? Well, will so they'll do a bit of googling. Uh, but as it turns out, uh, nobody believes Bin Laden, did it? As it turns out, every fucker knows it were an inside job. Oh, that's all right then. I suppose any bloke with a beard will do fuck films then. I mean, fuck it, we'll kick him out from charity shop. I mean, fuck it. Who the fuck understands Arabic anyway? 
If that folks, we could turn it into a big giant game and spot the difference. I mean, there's loads of other figureheads who we can use anyway. I mean, take this bloke for example. This guy's called Harham Jandri. Uh, now, this guy is a proper, proper devout Muslim, but also a full-time pisshead. You know the sort. Yeah, well, this guy is, uh, he's, he's got deep connections to this fighting. Well, well you know how uh, CIA built this uh, big fighting force, I think, you know, to bash the Russians. Yeah, well, us British, we had his own band of merry men, didn't we? They were called Al Muju Al Button Moon. Yeah, we used them in early 90s, fighting in Kosovo. Well, it was British. I mean, we've mastered their art, this. I mean, we're right dab and at this recruiting lark. In fact, folks, I mean, it was British who first invented the Muslim Brotherhood back in 1920s Egypt. But I'll delve a bit deeper in a future film. Yeah, but like I was saying, this Chandra bloke, he's got proper deep connections to this button moon lot. But anyway, uh, one night, he's, he's coming back from pub. Uh, he has a chat with him, I find. He says, hey, we've got a new gig for you. He says, oh, why? What's that like? So, hey, we want you to put the fun back in fundamentalism. We want you to go out and go start stirring some shit, cause as much shit as you can, just complete chaos. Go on, it'd be a great laugh. Yeah, so what he does, he goes and sets this new group up, doesn't he? It's called Islam for UK. It's a bit like phones for you, but instead of knocking cheap contracts out, the dabble in a bit of hate speech, he's helped out, you know, by button moon lot. And some other stupid fuckers who got duped into joining him, like. But yeah, their job is just to create a load of fucking shit and ruffle a load of feathers, like. Yeah, so after watching an episode of Heart Attack, he goes and makes loads of these placards, don't he? Makes them up and goes into, you know, public places. And he fucking hell, the public are having a right if he fits at these placards. They're like, oh, fucking hell, you can't say all that. So they go moaning to government, don't they? Say, have you seen this fucker here? You can't say all that. Fucking big head people and all that. But let's do, do something about it. So... You're allowed free speech, are you? No, not when it's that shit. You're going to have to take all our free speech off us. Take us civil liberties away from us. We don't want them. Yeah, so at prayer time, this chandry bloke goes to his garden shed and gets pissed off. Uh, and he's thinking, you know, what can I do? What can I do to make people really, really, really pissed off and angry? What can I do? Well, there's this town in the UK called Woolly Bassett. They do all sorts here, uh, and sometimes they do odd funeral, you know, for those who got duped into going to war. So Chandra turns up with his crew to one of these funerals as they start burning poppies. Fucking hell, all hell breaks loose, doesn't it? Yeah, the population's absolutely fucking furious about this. And, you know, there were that many of the population who was fucking furious, that many of them, it was time for a new group, wasn't it? They're called the EDL. I'll delve a bit deeper in a future film, folks. But yeah, they're run by this guy here called Tommy Robinson. He once applied for a job on Blackadder, but they give it to some bloke Tony instead. But yeah, he's in charge of the EDL. Now, Tommy's team, uh, his followers, uh, they don't go to mosque on a Sunday like George's crew. Uh, they go to stadiums instead on a Saturday. But they still watch Heart Attack and they still make their own placards. But yeah, and basically, the recruitment process is just the same. Just like Chaudhry calls his crew. Uh, oh, not the Westerners, they're invading Muslims and they're taking over. Uh, Tommy tells his team, oh, look, the Muslims are invading us Westerners, us, us English, you know, they're taking over. You know, come on, we've got to fight against them. I mean, what's blatantly going on here, it's all about divide and conquer. But the followers, they're right like stupid fuckers. They ain't got a fucking clue what's going on. But well, saying that, you know, they haven't got a bright spark between them. I mean, these followers, they, they still believe in Santa. And these followers, the English Defence League, they don't even realise his Queen's a German. But as long as the paychecks keep rolling in, you know, we'll always, always have new recruits. I mean, not all football fans are uh, part of the EDL. And, and, you know, maybe at this point, I should point out, not all Muslims are international terrorists. In fact, I actually know a Muslim. He's a really, really nice bloke. Once local kebab shop. And if you order on a Thursday, you get a free can of pop. I should also point out that uh, this Chaudhry bloke, it's not the only bloke with his own crew. I mean, we've got loads of these blokes dotted about. I mean, take this bloke, for example. Now, this bloke, uh, this bloke here, is called Abu Hamaz. 
Now, back in olden days, this Hamas bloke, uh, he used to be a pirate. But he had to retire early because he got a bit seasick. So, you know, he moved into international terrorism, which meant, you know, bang straight onto our payroll. So this Hamas bloke is like, well, you know, what what you got planned for me? Hey, we've got a right plan for you, pal. Uh, what we want you to be is one of these iMans. It's a bit like having an iPhone, but a lot more fun. Uh, basically, we want you to just preach a load of shit to idiots. Uh, so what we do for him, we, we build him a mosque in Finsbury Park. It's a lot like a normal mosque, though, where they preach about love and peace and the dangers of eating bacon. I don't know, something to do with high cholesterol or something. No, this Finsbury Park mosque is all about preaching hate. Proper mind warping and manipulating everybody. It's gonna be a right laugh, is this one? Yeah, we lure people into this mosque on the promise of free tea towels, and once they are in, you know, we proper got inside the red, sir, and proper manipulated the teachings of Allah. Proper easy to manipulate, and once you're inside the red, you can get them to do well. I mean, take these lot here, uh, proper got inside the red, and anyway, they ended up with a ton of uh, plant food in some storage lockup. The what? Someone's got a ton of them, cat. Fucking wait there, I'll bring me decks round, we'll get wrecked. No, 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 not that plant food. Uh, this is other plant food, you know, stuff what you met bombs out of. Uh, they must have read about in Jolly Roger Cookbook. So when I five tell police about it, police raid them, and you know, they're busted, aren't they? And then all of a sudden, back in newspapers, tell her, tell her, tell her, tell her, the Muslims are going to kill you. You know, we leave the part out about, you know, how we groomed them into making this uh, plant food bomb. But no, oh, you don't tell the public about that shit. You tell the public about, tell her, tell her, tell her, the Muslims are going to kill you. And of course, you know, uh, it all looks good for MI5 because now they've got some sort of justification for monitoring all your porn activity and reading your dirty texts to your wives, you know. Oh, we've got to read them because we bust fucking terror plots like this fucking plant food bomb. Terror, terror, terror. But yeah, this uh, Finsbury Park mosque-like, it, it is turning into a who's who of the terrorist world. I mean, Richard Reed, he stopped there for a bit. Even Michael Banjo, he stopped there for a while. And you know what happened when we got inside his head? Oh, I can't. Oh, I. Uh, but yeah, this uh, Amaz bloke, uh, he's turning into quite the celebrity, isn't he? So now he's got his own little cult following. Uh, it's time for him to hit the streets, hit the streets of London, go around preaching all his hate and causing some shit. Uh, so yeah, he needs his own black eyes, don't he? But this Amaz bloke, he never quite the fan of heart attacks, so he just goes straight to Hobbycraft instead. And then all of a sudden, you know, he's got his own black eyes. Yeah, so he's out on the streets of Britain, you know, preaching all his shit. You know, every fucker's just walking past, they're not listening to him. Well, you know what streets of Britain are like, every fucker's on the phone playing on Facebook. There's an app for that, don't you know? Uh, but yeah, this Sam has blowers, you know, how, how can I get people to listen? So he goes and buys this super big megaphone off eBay, don't he? Turns volume on full whack and starts preaching his shit again, all about how Shabby Law should be brought into Britain. Alright, what's this Shabby Law like? Well, this Sharia law, it's all about how you're allowed to marry 50 wives all at the same time. Uh, but if you commit adultery, uh, you get stoned to death. I don't think they've quite worked out the dynamics of it and how it all works. But the practicalities, they're completely irrelevant. It's all about preaching all this shit and pissing the population off. Yeah, let's bring the Sharia law in and piss the population off. And the population, they are pissed off. They're absolutely fucking fuming here. Isn't this fucker here wanting to bring Sharia law in? Fucking hell. And I'll tell us all, fucking Braverners pipe up again, don't they? Why, oh, you know, he wants to ban women drivers as well. So they have a fucking gift bath. But, you know, most of it's, you know, the population, they're like, the what? We can have this Sharia law coming in. They're not chopping our arms and legs off. And we're not having fucking Lego bricks chucked at his ear. Fuck that, we're not having this fucking Sharia law. I don't fucking do something about it. Fuck free speech. If this is free speech, we shouldn't be allowed it. Take free speech away from us. Take assimilators away from us. We can't be having this shit. 
But yeah, just to add a bit of fuel to fire, we use the newspapers. You see, newspapers have a habit of uh, persuading the public opinion. But yeah, just as the uh, population's absolutely fucking fuming at this fucking Hamas bloke, uh, you know, in the newspapers, that is just how Cushy has fucking got it. Oh, hey, he's got a fucking 30 grand a year benefit, fucking uh, coaching, and he's also got a million pound mansion. What else is benefit paying? Fucking hell, Jeremy Kyle finds out about this. He's fucking having kittens. He's fucking fuming. Absolutely livid he is. So yeah, you know what Kyle's like, don't you? Hey, why don't you get a proper job and stop scrounging off the state? So but when Amaz uh, declines the invite to go on his show, Kyle starts sulking, doesn't he? And he goes and tells EDL about it. Yeah, have you seen what this Amaz has been doing? And EDL like, oh, well, thanks for letting us know, Jezza. Normally we just look at pictures. So suddenly EDL, they need to uh, prove to the world that they aren't OD'd on a spot, I mean. And, you know, they do know the full letters in the alphabet. And to prove it, they start spraying EDL all across the mosque and the, up and down the country. Look, fuckers, I told you we knew all the letters. Fucking Muslims. The what? They've just defaced Santa's grotto. Fucking Muslims don't take any shit to the... So, of course, they go and plan to uh, bomb the EDLA up in Jewsbury. But, of course, nothing ever happens without us being the orchestrators behind it. You know, uh, so we go and bust them just so we can go terror, 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 uh, divide and conquer, and take everybody's civil liberties and free speech, mind warp, get inside people's heads, terror, 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 uh, divide and conquer, take everybody's free speech. And it's a never-ending cycle. Meanwhile, across the pond, President told Barrack Pajamas, you know, apart from losing his passport, he hadn't really done much with his presidency. Not like tall bushy boy who went out conquering the world. Yeah, we haven't really done much with his presidency. So, you know, he, he, he goes and has a chat with real chiefs in charge. Says, yeah, can, can you give me something to do, you know, so, you know, make it look like I've done something in my term. So, yeah, uh, we'll let you be the guy who kills Bin Laden. Bin Laden, I thought he's been dead for years. Fucking hell, pyjamas, keep up, her. Uh, we live in a world of Photoshop now. Even some pothead from Pontefract can uh, do an image of Bin Laden dead. I mean, don't forget how thick the population actually is. I don't know, there must be some in water. But, you know, they're incredibly thick. I mean, all we have to do is just beam the image across all the news networks and then suddenly, you know, they buy into it. Because, of course, if it's on the news, you know, it must be true. Yeah, these populations, they're not the brightest sparks, you know. You could tell them out and they believe you. Hey, you could even have them believe in Santa Claus is a real person. But, yeah, that's that investigation under wraps now, see ya. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you want to look for other films, just type Ponty Porn Investigates into the search thing. Uh, and also, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, oh yeah, another thing. I know YouTube's fucked the comment system up and no fucker knows how to, you know, write a comment anymore. But, you know, I do like to read them. Even if it's just to call me a cunt. Go on, get it off your chest. I still like to read them. One last thing before I go. What I need you to do with this video is click share. Share it and you never know. It could go viral.